Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be getting started on my review of The Stand by Stephen King. This is actually a reread for me. I've been listening to it via audiobook as part of Rereadathon. I was supposed to be reading it in um, in 2019, but here we are. Also, a very strange time to be reading this book because everybody's talking about coronavirus. So, I'm going to go through my notes here. So, uh, in the intro essays, he pays a little nod to the people who thought that even the original book was too long. But he says he published the expanded edition because people asked for it. His fans wanted to see the full thing. And uh, when he gets asked, how do you write? He says one word at a time. And uh, yeah, I thought it was really interesting. The, the short version of the book was published because his accountant said that the longer version would be too cost prohibitive. They'd have to increase the price of it because of increasing the printing costs. And then nobody would want to buy it. He said, it's never been his favourite novel, but it's one of his books that people seem to like the most. Somebody said, if you decide on an abortion, I'll scrape up the cash. And then there was a joke made about whether it was pun intended or not. The, uh, the virus that takes place in this story, it has a 99.4% mortality rate, I believe. There was a great quote, it's no fun to watch a friend who's pissed his pants and doesn't even know it. And then one of the characters quotes Robert Frost, or I assume that this is a Robert Frost quote. I didn't actually, I googled it and couldn't find out. But um, yeah, the quote is, home is where when you go there, you, they have to take you in. One thing I didn't like, he used the word smilingly. Uh, smilingly is like one of my least favourite words. I hate it whenever I see it. And the narrator as well, there was some Lord of the Rings references and he said, uh, Hobbiton, in to rhyme with Bobby's gone, instead of like Hobbiton to rhyme with Bobby fun. Okay, just a few more bits that I wanted to share from the stand here. So there was the quote, um, Is dying with our tie on our generation's equivalent of dying with your boots on? Could well be. And then, um, yeah, we, once the virus starts to kick in, we have that there's not enough men around hunting to keep the deer population down. And um, I've just got to the bit where uh, th that I really remember about where all the people who died accidentally. So, for example, there's this mum who finds a baggie of weed in her son's bedroom. She succeeds in getting stoned. Uh, and then she gets drunk on creme de menthe, which is the only thing she'll drink. And she lights a cigarette, falls asleep and burns the house down. And that's the end of her. Uh, we had like junkies going through withdrawal because all the pushers and users have either fled or were dead. And uh, we have one of these characters... He, uh, he goes to one of the pusher's houses and uh, finds her drug stash, but doesn't realise that the stuff he buys is normally cut, so he shoots himself up and just overdoses. So yeah, pretty bleak. So a couple more bits from the stand I wanted to mention. We get this great quote. Uh, somebody says, I'm never going to get the calluses off my fanny. Uh, fanny means something different in the UK to what it means in America as well. It means the thing on the other side. And uh, a quote, the longer I go, the more I want other people, which seems particularly relevant at the moment because everyone's stuck in their houses because of coronavirus, you know? All right, so I'm going to do some more stuff on the stand. So I thought it was cool. Uh, the plague took the dogs, but it spared the wolves because the wolves are wild and the dogs weren't. It was again, a, gr a great quote. Uh, My fanny feels like hamburger. Again, I have to say this each time. Fanny means something different in British English. Uh, we have the beauty of religious mania is that it has the power to explain everything. They also no longer know what time it is. Uh, they've all like lost the time and you know people disagree on what the actual time is. They, also, they don't have a, a doctor, they've just got a vet. Uh, this is at the point when they start to build their little small town. Uh, so there's a character, he marks his place in a book he's reading with dollar bills that he's found. He says that people still stop and pick them up when they see them in the streets, even though obviously there's no use or value to them anymore. We get a quote, I don't want to share any secrets with anyone who grins like that and looks as though he doesn't sleep at night. Uh, one of the characters says as well, they need to create leaflets because people are going to start dying if they don't get taught how to like properly scavenge and make sure that food is okay. I also wrote down, only King could get me super interested in a committee. Uh, there's a nod to Animal Farm on the line where, you know, they look to the pigs and the men and they couldn't tell the difference. They don't want to become the bad guy in order to beat him. And the bad guy here is Randall Flagg, who is like the baddest of the bad. Uh, we again have a fanny. Uh, she felt a loose hearthstone under her fanny. And uh, someone was wool gathering as well, which I feel like that's happened a few times in this book. And it always reminds me of uh, Charles Heathcote. Somebody found, uh, I think it was Franny that he found it for, a uh, washboard so that it would be easier for, to, for her to wash clothes. And he found it in a music store, because obviously back in the day, like Skiffle, they used to use washboards. 
Um, the dog Kojak as well that they meet along the way. He comes back and meets them at the town. And the vet's delighted because it means that he's got like an actual animal to, to look after rather than a human. There's a character who swears he met Jim Morrison pumping gas. And uh, at this time again, this town's really starting to build. They're actually in Boulder, Colorado, I think. And they have no idea who's there, so they decide they need to rebuild a census. They actually have to rebuild society from scratch, so they create a new constitution and set up law enforcement and a judiciary system and stuff like that. But then we have something else as well, so new babies that are born are still getting killed by Captain Trips, which is the flu virus, and pr uh, Franny is pregnant at this time. They actually have to spend a day, basically, the baby will probably die within a day, and uh, Franny says, a day is a long time to spend to wait to see whether your baby dies outside of your body. I thought it was weird as well that there's a Fran who's pregnant, and my friend Fran was pregnant. She's had her baby, they're doing well. Uh, the narrator also said thought, 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 but with his accent, it sounded like he said thought, thought, thought. As in, that hoe over there. Not a pleasant term. Uh, there was a line about someone having no mouth with which to scream, which I believe is like a nod to Harlan Ellison. Is it Harlan Ellison who, who wrote, uh, I have no mouth and I cannot scream? And I believe he was also an influence for Stephen King as well. Uh, they got the power back on as well, but it almost immediately overloads because they only had one generator powering it. And basically when everyone died or, you know, the shit hit the fan, everyone left stuff turned on. So then they have to go like round the town turning things off. I think I also noted, I think that what I really like is what puts people off, which is that it focuses on the reestablishment of civilization. I find that super fascinating, but I can also see why some people think it's boring and that they think that part of the book kind of drags a little bit. And then uh, uh, Nick gets blown up as well. He's my favourite character and he gets blown up. Great. So yeah, I have about nine hours left and I'm going to try and finish it soon. Okay, some more bits for the stand. So I've basically been binging on the audiobook, just trying to, uh, trying to get to the end of it. I have another about four and a half hours to go. So I've got some notes for you. So uh, the characters, they were playing poker for money. And they said it has as much value for as Monopoly notes. So somebody was $60,000 up. And again, this comes back to the idea of money having no value in this post-apocalyptic society. We had a little sentence that made me laugh again because of Fanny. She stomped off Fanny swinging in tight little circles of indignation. It's just got me, like, how does a vagina swing in circles of indignation? I don't understand it. <laughs> And then the lion, Starv starvation is a great hallucinogenic, which I suppose it is. Okay, we have finished. So I've just got these last few bits to uh, share with you guys. So uh, the virus took man and man's best friend, meaning the dogs, and somebody else goes and left the cats, which I thought was quite harsh. And then right at the end of the very final chapter, some of the characters, one of them was singing the first Noel. And the audiobook narrator started singing it, and it was just the worst thing ever. I hated it. Hey, Biggie. Okay, we've got some bonus bits for the stand. I thought I'd finished uh, filming, but I found this file I'd missed out. So Fran was reading Agatha Christie in the hospital. Somebody said, what if you catch pregnant again? Which I thought was an amusing way of saying it. Uh, and then uh, a, a, a line that made me chuckle. Somebody was described as, as nervous as a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. And then um, another observation as well, you didn't have to give the cops guns until they couldn't remember the names and the faces. And this talking about how this burgeoning police force, as the town gets bigger and bigger, there's more and more of a need for like hardcore law enforcement. But overall, yeah, I mean, I love The Stand. I didn't enjoy it as much via audiobook, but I think that's just because it was on audiobook. It also took me a lot longer, so I think the whole audiobook was about 50 hours and it took me about six weeks. Whereas when I read the book, it took me about a week. But as I say, I did still enjoy it. On this reread, I would have given it like a 4.25 out of 5. But again, I think that's just because it was the audiobook. And for my original read, I gave it a solid 5 out of 5. And it was probably my favourite book of that year. So there we have it. That's what I made of The Stand by Stephen King. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.